Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. I have been away. I've been in Thailand for four weeks, so I have not been uploading while I was away. I just kind of wanted to take some time after my internships to just kind of unwind and take some time to just kind of breathe. So I hope you guys forgive me for the lack of uploads, but we are back and ready to get back into it. Um, so I thought that after my internships, I would do some advice. I kind of wanted to wait until after I actually, one, secured the internships and two, um, got a training contract because I didn't want to be sitting here giving advice to people when I didn't have a training contract yet. So, amazing news, I now have one, which honestly is the most exciting thing ever. I got it while I was away as well. So, yeah, it was, it was a very exciting time. So, I thought that I would kind of collect my thoughts, come back and do a video about some kind of really specific things that I find really helpful doing my applications. Um, so we're going to cover commercial awareness, some tips and tricks that I kind of collected, some really useful information and really specific things. I feel like when you go on LinkedIn and you see people post about it, the advice is so generic and I think that everyone says the same things but it's not actually useful to put into practice unless you know how to do it so i hope that makes sense but i'm gonna try and break it down and give you guys some really really specific things that will hopefully help you when you're doing your applications so yeah we're gonna kind of do it in sections so it's nice and clear and concise but i'm gonna try and keep it to a minimum as well but if you guys have any questions at any point please do not hesitate to reach out to me there were so many people that helped me along my journey and i am really really passionate about doing that also so if you guys need any help at any point please do not hesitate to message me so Let's get into it. So before we get started, I just want to preface that this is my own experience. I am not a recruiter. I'm not an expert in this process. I'm just gonna give you my own experiences and let you know what I did to succeed. So yeah, take everything with a pinch of salt. Do all of your own research, of course, but this is just, this is just my experience. So first I thought it might be useful to just do a little bit of background. So I am, um, I've just graduated from my fourth year at law school at Strathclyde University, which is a non-Russell Group University. Um, so I applied for vacation schemes in my third year and was completely unsuccessful. I did two interviews, but was rejected from both. Um, I think I went into it very, very unprepared. I didn't really know what what to do, how to approach it, or really just kind of anything about what was expected throughout the process. Um, I think I went about it in the complete wrong way, but it was good from a learning perspective because then the second year I went in, I changed a lot of things. So yeah, that is, that's kind of how my process went. So I am starting my training contract in 2024, which is next year. So anyway, let's do some information about how I think, what I changed, what I did differently and how I obtained three vacation scheme offers. So I think first and foremost, the big thing that I did wrong the first year compared with the second year is I applied to so many firms. I also am by my window, so the light is kind of changing. I apologize, it's a cloudy day. Um, so yeah, the first year I applied, I applied to about 23 firms, I think, um, which is a lot. And I did not kind of take the time to do the proper research. I think when you apply to that many, there is no way that it, there's no possible way for you to actually do enough research to apply to that many firms. Also, you're doing all of the things at, at open in September-ish. So you're doing all of your uni work while doing all of the applications and everything as well. So it is a very, very difficult process. But yeah, I applied to over 20 firms. I, <laughs> I honestly, it's actually embarrassing to even say this out loud. I didn't check the applications. I wrote them all, submitted. I didn't even, I genuinely, for most of the things, I was doing them at like 11 o'clock at night. I was just bashing them out and thinking, do you know what? The more I do, the more likely I'm gonna I'm gonna get an offer or more likely I'm gonna get through to the next stage in the process. It's not the case. It honestly is not the case. You are so much better off taking your time with the applications, doing the research and making sure, the most important part, making sure you see yourself at that firm. And my second year round, I applied to eight firms. So, 
if I couldn't see myself being a part of that firm or doing the work that they do at that firm, I didn't apply because there is no point in wasting your time if you physically do not see yourself working there, if you don't like the culture, if you haven't heard good things, whatever it is, don't apply there if you can't see yourself working there. I think that was the biggest takeaway for me and it saved myself so much time and meant I could spend a lot more time focusing on the firms I actually really wanted to work for. So biggest takeaway, do your research and take your time, do not rush them and be very, very selective about who you apply for. Number two, I think this is the biggest thing where when I saw it on LinkedIn, I just didn't really know how to put it into practice. So everyone's like, be specific and use examples in your in your applications and stuff like that. Like, why do you want to work for X firm? Why do you want to why do you want to do this? And I think I didn't really understand what that meant. So I, the biggest resource that I used, which I didn't use in the first year, was the Commercial Law Academy. It is incredibly useful. So I was looking through some of the example applications and just a reminder, it goes without saying, never copy any application you see. If you see example answers, never, never, never copy them. Um, that's obvious, but just <laughs> wanted to reiterate that. Um, but yeah, I was reading some of them and it would be like, uh, so I love, want to work at this firm because of the, their use of tech, blah, 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 blah. They would all be like this AI that this firm uses. Um, it, it's using specific examples to show that you've actually gone that one step further in your research to actually understand what the firm's use and how that benefits not only the lawyers and how they they complete the work, but also how that benefits the client. So it's doing that bit extra to understand why they do what they do and why that's beneficial to the firm and also to the client. So that is probably the biggest thing that I kind of took. So it's about kind of researching, well, what AI does X firm use and going in and looking at the projects that they have and all of this stuff is on the website. So you just have to do a bit more of a deep dive. But that is something, be very specific, but look into specifics so it's easier for you to kind of relate it back. Um, and I think that was something that really, really helped me. And that, that links into the next one that I wrote down, which is link everything you say back to why it's relevant. So if you're saying, I'm a team player, I work well in teams, blah, 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 I've been in the netball team, I've done athletics, whatever you've done. Okay, cool. But why is that important to what you're applying to? So it's every single sentence you write to say, why is this relevant to what I'm applying for? I want to be a commercial solicitor, for example. Okay, so why is you being a team player important? Because you're going to work in teams as a trainee solicitor, you need to be able to communicate, blah, 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 blah. So it's like you say your point and then you link it back to say, okay, why is that relevant? And I think that was, again, something that I was really lacking in the first, first year of applications. I was just being like, blah, 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 I've done this, I've done that. But it, it isn't kind of taking that step back to say, okay, well, why is all of this stuff important for what I'm trying to say? And again, just such a simple one. People say this all the time, proofread. I didn't, genuinely didn't proofread any of them the first year, which is just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, but do multiple drafts because a lot of the time I would write one and be like, this is the best thing I've ever written in my life. I sent it to one of my friends and she was like, what is this? And then I looked back and I was like, yeah, okay, you're right. <laughs> so it's it, obviously everybody doesn't have that luxury, but if you have friends who are also doing law or any other kind of anything, I send a lot of stuff to my sister, she doesn't do law, but it's very, very useful to get a different set of eyes on things just to kind of take that step back and make sure saying that in every single point, take a step back. Um, but yeah, it's really useful to get somebody else to have a look over it, make some changes, make sure it all makes sense. Um, and yeah, it is very, very, very useful. So it also just just helps to look at mistakes. You'll have missed things which you don't realize because you've been looking at it for too long. Um, but yeah, and then another thing I would say, which I've seen a lot of people like recruiters say on LinkedIn is write in simple terms. Don't try and write something to make yourself sound really intelligent because it just backfires. If something is not easy for them to read, Remember, they are going to be reading genuinely hundreds, if not thousands, of applications. If it's big firms, they if they if they struggle to understand what you're saying in the first thing, you're not they're going to bin it because it's not 
it's not something that they're going to sit and try and spend loads of time trying to understand they're just going to move on to the next one so make sure you write it in simple terms don't add loads of unnecessary big words don't use a thesaurus just write in clear plain simple english to make it easier for them to understand and it just it just gives you gives you a better a better chance i think second commercial awareness is something that gets thrown around all the time and i think it honestly is not that complex when you actually break it down um so pretty much the only resource i used this year was the financial times podcast so you don't have to read anything basically i'll show you on my phone basically what it is um is they do like a 10 minute roundup every single day so like here you can see oh, you probably won't be able to see because of the reflection but anyway they have a 10 a 10 minute um round up every single day of the kind of top stories around the world um and obviously it is all commercial it's finan the financial times it's all the big stories about the economy finance all of the kind of banks all of that kind of stuff um and that was incredibly useful to me so i basically i heard things like when i was listening to it i was like mm, that's really interesting and i would write it in my notes on my phone and then again the key to answering these kind of questions is linking it back so a lot of the times in the interviews the questions that i got were what are the biggest trends affecting the industry or what is a big story right now that is going to affect law firms or what do you see the biggest things going to be in the next five years affecting law firms so all of the all of the stories have to link back to why it affects the firms so the one that i used was when i was doing it the whole thing with russia was going on and there was the oil they basically stopped their oil imports from russia um, and what I didn't know, and I heard this in the podcast, is that um, I think it was diesel is the biggest um, like fuel source that they use for the construction industry. So the, the firms that I applied for all had massive construction departments. So I was saying, okay, well, this is going to happen. There's going to be huge cost, cost changes to the fuels and this is going to impact the firms because of X, Y and Z. So... It's about hearing a story and thinking, hmm, how can you relate that back and thinking about the specific firm. So again, that was another way where I was researching the specific firms to say, well, I know that you work on this and this would affect you because of this. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's making sure that you're not just saying, okay, well, inflation's going up. Okay, cool. But why, why is that? I just got the fright in my life. Oh my god, my Google Home just went off and I got the fright of my life. <laughs> it's all about just linking it back and making sure that they know that you understand what you're talking about because, again, it, particularly in interviews, they will question you. So what happened in mine is I would give an answer and then they would say, hmm, interesting, can you tell me a little bit more about this aspect of it or can you tell me a little bit more about this or that's an interesting point, why do you say that? So they will, they will in a lot of the firms and interviews challenge you. So you need to understand what you're talking about. So for me, I chose kind of like two or three things, probably two to be honest, where I actually understood it in depth. Um, one of which was my dissertation because all of the firms that I applied for had really big finance departments. Um, so that I already understood in and out anyway because it was my dissertation and then the other ones I chose because they were relevant to all of the firms I was applying to so you only had to tailor it a little bit and include like some of the projects and the clients and stuff that they work with um so yeah being super super specific and the financial times podcast was so 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 good and also it just gave me I found it quite interesting because it gave me a really good overview of the markets and it meant that it was easier for me to kind of relate things back because I understood it and they speak so simply. So if you've ever read the Financial Times, the Financial Times actual newspaper can be quite complicated and quite boring. But the podcast is literally 10 minutes. They'll do like a couple of minutes on each story and you'll find if you listen to it every day, they kind of build upon it. So if there's things that are happening, they'll speak about that every single day. So you'll get like new information, up-to-date information. It's really good cannot recommend um the financial times podcast anymore because it was so 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 useful for me so commercial experience again is another thing that i really really made a concerted effort to change my first year to the second year so a lot of the times they the firms will ask you why commercial law and 
obviously finding commercial experience is very difficult but for you to say I want to be a commercial lawyer but I have never experienced anything to do with commercial law and have no idea what it's about that's a very very difficult thing to try and swing if you don't know anything about it so what I did was I did the bright internship um, which is in commercial law and it's online um, it was like I think it was like a week long and it was really really useful so I would really recommend signing up to that next year I think it's in June so it was passed for this year but I would recommend signing up to that next year if you are kind of unsuccessful this year or if you haven't started applying yet um, the other thing which is really good and it's kind of online experience is forage so loads and loads and loads of firms have online internship experiences where you can choose which one you want to do it also just kind of looks good for that firm if you've gone out and you've done their internship experience gives you a bit of an insight into what you would do as a day-to-day -day trainee and it's just really useful to kind of get an insight into what kind of things you would do so when they say why do you want to do commercial law or what do you like about commercial law you can genuinely tell them an actual experience rather than just kind of waffling something up I was also lucky enough to organise my own internship last summer um, in a big bank um, so yeah, I organised that myself. So if you guys aren't successful at getting vacation schemes, don't kind of call at the end of the day. I would try your hardest to reach out to people on your own and try and get something organised just even for a couple of days, a week, two weeks. Try and get, get something, local solicitors, anything you can do to try to get a little bit of experience under your belt will be incredible. So yeah try and get as much as you can just kind of relevant things to put on your cv to make yourself stand out a little bit try just try and think of some things you can do to make yourself stand out but do not lose hope um i think that is my biggest piece of advice i was absolutely devastated last year when i didn't get anything and i think it can be incredibly deflating to go through the whole process and not come out with anything but i think you just need to remember how competitive this process is law is genuinely one of the most competitive industries that you can go into there are thousands and thousands of students trying to do exactly the same thing as you so if it takes you a few years please do not beat yourself up. It took me two years to to get an offer um, and every single person is different. Every single person is gonna have a different experience and just try and stay positive, keep going, learn from the experience and take away from the rejections and just kind of learn from the entire process. It is disheartening, it is hard and it can be very, very difficult to get through the process but you can do it i promise you there are so many amazing resources out there to help you i honestly would recommend commercial law academy so 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 much there are every single possible resource on there from firm profiles with loads of specific information which you can use there's examples there is how to do psychometric tests there's genuinely there is everything on there that you could possibly need to understand um and it's so well laid out it was genuinely the best thing i possibly could have used um for my applications and i would not recommend it enough so yeah get on that get on the financial times podcast uh, do some online internships and I hope you are all incredibly successful. I'm sure you will be but if there are any other questions in the comments please let me know, please please let me know and I will try my best to help you all. Obviously it goes without saying I am not an expert so this is just my experience. This is not me giving kind of award-winning advice. This is just my experience over the last two years and how I changed things to become a little bit more successful. So yeah, take everything with a pinch of salt, do all of your own research, of course. And yeah, I wish you all the best of luck. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not already, please be sure to subscribe. We are starting the diploma or the LPC in September. So we've got another year of uni. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, like this video and pop me a comment and I will see you in my next video. I love you all so much. Bye.